So you're revising for the Natural Sciences Admissions Assessment, NSAA, with the aim of achieving an offer from Cambridge. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down section one of the NSAA to give you all of the information that you need to take on this exam. So let's get into it. As you hopefully already know, the NSAA has two sections, which they have helpfully named section one and section two. Firstly, let's talk about the format of section one. There are four different parts to section one of which you are required to answer two, one of which must be mathematics. The four parts are mathematics, part A, physics, part B, chemistry, part C, and biology, part D. So you'll answer questions on maths plus one science subject. Each part consists of 20 multiple choice questions. Therefore, you will answer a total of 40 questions in section one. You are not allowed to use a calculator in any part of the exam. This means that your mental maths needs to be on point. One of the things that candidates struggle the most with in any exam, but especially the multiple choice exam, is timing. I'm sorry to say that this exam is no exception, especially section one. You have 60 minutes to complete this section, so that means 60 minutes for 40 questions, approximately one and a half minutes per question. Not a lot of time. The best way to deal with this is simply to practice NSAA past paper questions under time conditions, as these will, be of a, will not be of a similar format to questions that you've done before, say in your GCSE or Year 12 exams. Now it's important to note that you should not expect to get full marks on this exam, or even answer all of the questions in the allocated time. There is no section one required mark on this exam in order to progress to the next stage of your application, the interview. You should just be trying to answer as many questions correctly as you can. Each correct answer gains you one mark, but crucially, there is no negative marking. What I mean by this is that if you get an answer wrong, then you get zero for that question, not minus one. This means that if you're not 100% sure about how to answer a question, but you don't know what else you would do to answer it further, or maybe you don't have time to try another method, then put the answer down any way that you think, as you have nothing to lose. To help with your revision, Cambridge very helpfully provides a specification, which tells you everything that you need to know and understand for the exam, broken down by section. All of the mathematical knowledge from part A, mathematics, is assumed for parts B, C and D, but this doesn't really make a difference since every student is required to sit part A questions anyway. You should also make sure that you're familiar and comfortable with the use of SI units, that is standard units for scientific quantities, as well as how different SI units are linked and interconverted. Candidates should also be happy with the use of SI prefixes such as milli, micro or kilo, and what these mean in addition to the use of negative indices like ms to the power minus one. There is a list of specific SI prefixes expected in this specification and you can find the specification on the Cambridge website. Now let's dive into our most important NSAA section one tips. First, practice past paper questions under timed conditions. Remember that you have only one minute and a half per question in this section. So my advice would be to think about and work at a question for a minute, and if you have an absolutely no idea about how to approach it further, move on. But if you're halfway through solving it, or you think you know what to do to carry on, then by all means carry on with that question. I'd also like to say take this with a pinch of salt. You aren't restricted to one minute and a half exactly per question. Some will take you a bit longer, whereas others will take a little bit less time. So you should average out okay as long as you aren't taking longer for every question. What I'm trying to say is don't be completely rigid with the timing, as you should be focusing on answering questions during the exam, not on sticking to a one minute and a half per question time. Tip number two, practice your mental maths. As I mentioned, you're not allowed to take a calculator into this exam. And that means that all the calculations need to be done in your head or with a pen and paper. If this is something that you think that you might struggle with, I would really recommend practicing your mental maths online separately to answering the NSAA past paper questions. There are lots of websites available which can help you practice quick fire mental maths questions so you can have a go. Tip number three, decide which subject you will answer questions on before you get to the exam. By all means, if you like and are equally good at both chemistry and biology, for example, 
practice the NSAA past paper questions for both of these subjects. In fact, I would recommend it. However, given the limited time on the day, I would recommend deciding in advance which of the two, or three if you're multi-talented, you will answer the questions in the real thing. You will not have time, for example, to look through the questions trying to pick which ones you like best on the day, nor can you answer a mix of the two subjects, so be prepared to go in knowing which subjects that you're going to be answering. I hope you now feel more prepared to tackle the section one. If you want more information about the NSAA in general, including my top tips, check out our articles online. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to unlock the rest of the course, which includes over 1,000 NSAA questions, 20 hours of NSAA tutorials, and work solutions to all the past papers, click the link in the description below.